Could there be another serial killer in our midst? Two heinous crimes took place within five kilometers and five days of each other. Uh, from where I am standing right now, on Saturday night, a 58-year-old man was killed outside the International Muslims Organization Mosque. And uh, on last Monday, another man was killed under a bridge near the Humber River. Both were stabbed. Yesterday, investigators took the unusual step of announcing that there may be a link between these two murders. One expert tells City News that they may, that may be because they believe there is a risk to public safety. There is something here that tells them uh, that there is a, a imminent public risk uh, in uh, withholding this information and that by contrast, there's a, a, it's in the public interest to, to alert them without causing obviously panic. Rampreet or Peter Singh was stabbed to death on Monday, September 7th. 58-year-old Mohammed Aslam Zafis was stabbed in the neck on Saturday the 12th. It is unusual for police to make public a possible link between two and only two crimes so early on in the investigation. Often investigators may sort of uh, in backroom case conferences, have early working theories they'll share amongst themselves. But to have the, the confidence to go public with this tells me that there is some sort of corresponding or corroborating uh, data. It would be uh, some kind of match or linkage made using the violent crime linkage analysis. The violent crime linkage analysis, or VICLASS, is a Canadian computerized system that enables trained investigators to analyze the data of separate crimes and compare them. It's an investigative tool made up of 300 plus questions that must be filled out after every homicide. The answers may help police make a match between crimes. The extent and type of violence used, the weapon, location, and many other factors are considered. There is some piece of holdback evidence that is being withheld uh, that is compelling uh, and compelling in, in, in to such a degree that uh, when each of these boxes gets ticked with, on each of these questionnaires corresponding with each murder, uh, it stands out to the software as well. The software is used in conjunction with solid detective work, but details of what the questionnaire contains remain secret. Questionnaires have never been made public and uh, are exempt from uh, freedom of information requests for that reason. We don't want uh, the checklist falling into the wrong hands so offenders know uh, what police are looking for. Both victims in this case were stabbed. We know Zaffis was slashed in the throat, but it has not been revealed where on the body Singh, who was homeless, was attacked. Police have released little information on a possible suspect, only the security footage and one grainy image. Dr. Michael Arntfield is a criminologist at Western University and a former law enforcement officer. He says the potential link between these two homicides may have been prompted by the Bruce MacArthur investigation, where Toronto police were criticized for not alerting the public sooner to the possibility of a serial killer in our midst. The fact that they, they were so proactive in this circumstance tells me that they've learned from the past. Now, Arnfield adds that the fact that both these victims are visible minorities is one variable to consider. But at this stage of the investigation, it is far too early to conclude that these could be, if connected at all, hate-motivated crimes. Now, there is a funeral planned for Mohammed's office here at the mosque tomorrow. Officials say the congregation needs to come together to grieve.